I had had sons too. But they were gone now, forever. It was a very bad time. The Colonel had tried to help the people. But it was no use. So he decided to go his own way. He wanted to lose the madness over the mountains, he said, and begin again. Lose the madness, he said. And the German military is ready to use chaos in Croatia as a justification for actions that could just plunge the entire civilized world into action. Samuel, absolute... the word civilized has no place in any discussion of the affairs of this world. Morning, Colonel Ludlow. Tristan's gone hunting, so whatever it was, he didn't do it. <laughs> you don't have to worry about Tristan, Colonel. No, no, this here is Mr. John T. and Mr. James O'Banion. They own the new mercantile store. Morning. Morning, James. John T., sir. Morning, Alfred. Morning, Alfred. We were looking for a man we heard might be in this uh, part of the country. Uh, name of Tom Cullen. I have a likeness here. What does this fellow do? Do you recognize him? Yeah, I recognize him. You got him, James. This fellow passed by here. Uh, Maybe four, maybe five years ago. Did some work here. He was on his way to San Francisco, he said. He's hoping to book a passage on a boat to Australia. Australia? Or was it Hong Kong? I can't remember. Can you remember, Alfred? I think it was Hong Kong. Hong Kong, yeah. What exactly is he wanted for, sir? Well, he, uh... That would be of a private nature, sir. Private nature? It's a public office you hold there, Sheriff, isn't it? Gentlemen. There came a low hiss, a horrid cold sound that made Ricky Tikki Tavi jump back two clear feet, and then inch by inch out of the grass, rose up the head and spread hood of Nap, the big black cobra. You can always read another story, you know, Samuel. The Germans broke through at Armentiers. What? The entire British Third Corps is trapped in the Belgian lowlands. And this paper is already a week old. Calm down. Father, with my fluent German, I could become an officer. Yes, and lead other young boys to the slaughter and be slaughtered yourself. The men who served under you worshipped you. Then they were damn fools, all of them, weren't they? This is a turning point in the history of the world. H how can How can we... we what? Father, you can't expect us not to be part of this. You taught us... I taught you to think for yourselves. That's what I taught you. And to defend what's ours. Yes, what is ours? What is ours? Well, we've already lost two of our cousins at the mine. And we've never even met. And don't talk at me, boys, if I've never seen a war. Not a war like this, you haven't. Ah. They said that about the War of Secession. They said it about the Indian Wars. That's what people who want to sell newspapers say about wars. I have come to ask for your blessing. A blessing? You see, these gentlemen and... Uh, and a great many others, I might add. ...are urging me to run for office. Office? What sort of office? The United States Congress. That's how highly we think of your son in this county, Colonel. Well, Alfred. <laughs> and, uh, what do you gentlemen hope to get out of this? I beg your pardon, Colonel. I spoke in plain English, sir. What you want for yourself should my son be elected? <laughs> Father, I really don't think that these gentlemen... Didn't you ask that question yourself, Alfred, or do you honestly believe these good gentlemen back you simply out of a sense of patriotic duty and your own inestimable worth? You forget yourself, Father. I am no longer a child. Colonel, the Congress... Congress is government, sir. And I worked for the government once. Father, the issues that we... Indians! Indians were the issue in those days. I can assure you, gentlemen, there is nothing quite so grotesque as the meeting of a child with a bullet or an entire village slaughtered while sleeping. That was the government's resolution of that particular issue, and I have seen nothing in its behavior since then that would persuade me it has gained either wisdom, common sense, or humanity.